here's the thing. Got a meteorologist here. <laughs> WBOC's a meteorologist. One of me the meteorologists, yes. Mike, I think almost said the meteorologist. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for filling in for Jimmy today. Of who, course. Who, who's taken a couple days off. So I, I just decided, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta pick your brain a little bit because okay. I just heard that the hurricane report came out what yesterday? Yeah, from Colorado State. From Colorado State, yeah. and they're uh, a forecasting predicting... an above-average hurricane season. <gasps> I'm not liking the sound of that. Well, here's the thing: when we say above average, it's because the average is 12 named storms. It's six hurricanes, and three of them usually become major hurricanes. So mm -hmm. we define major hurricanes as Category Three or greater. The Colorado State came out with it. 17 name storms is what they're predicting. They're expecting, I think it's eight or nine to become hurricanes and four of them to become major hurricanes. So it's not like we're talking about a number that's over the top. Yeah. Not like last year when we were like, oh, they're forecasting 25 name storms this year. And all of us meteorologists were like, okay, we can see that, but what are the odds? And then we have 30 name storms and we had to deal with Isaias. Yeah. So we'll take, we'll take 17. We'll take it. That's a break from last year. We'll take it. And, and and the thing is, is when you first hear these these forecasts, you think they're all coming up the the east coast, and right. that's not necessarily the the chance. And well, well, that and you have to also think about the fact that hurricane season is from June one until November thirtieth. Okay. We're talking about a big time frame here for these seventeen storms to form. And depending on where they form and how they track, it could go, you know, into Central America, it could go into Mexico, it could go into the Caribbean, and a couple of those could take aim at the U.S. coast, but it's not necessarily the East Coast. We've got the Gulf Coast, we've got both sides of Florida, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's not necessarily for here on Delmarva, but we always have to stress, yeah. it only takes one only to take make it a bad season here on and Delmarva. And we've had some non-hurricanes that have caused more problems than actual named hurricanes. Right. I mean, whenever we get a, a winter storm or a nor'easter as it comes up the coast, that always causes major beach erosion. It causes coastal flooding. Mm -hmm. And flooding, as we always say, is one of the worst natural disasters that could happen because y you never know when it's going to hit. Like, we can predict heavy rain. We can predict flooding like that. But you don't realize how much damage it really does cost until it happens to you. Okay, so I have another question for okay. you. Which uh, weather do you like uh, predict? What, what do you like more? Is, I'm not saying that either is good, but when, as far as your job is concerned, mm -hmm. a winter storm or a summer storm hurricane type thing? And which is for, harder? For here on Delmarva? Here on Delmarva. I would rather be predicting tropical storms and hurricanes because yeah. the modeling has Weather gotten so good at the track. Not necessarily the intensity. We're still lacking in the computer models with the, the equations that we use to, you know, calculate how they determine these tracks. The tracks we have na nailed a lot of the time. Like, we'll know four days out where this is going to make landfall, or at least a 100-mile idea of where this is going to make landfall. But, like, in the last couple of years, especially Hurricane Michael that made landfall in the panhandle of Florida, you know, it nailed where it was going to make landfall four days early. But it had it as a Category 2, it made landfall as a Category 5. So yeah. there's still some wiggle room on that. And let me tell you, folks, <laughs> forecasting a winter storm here on Delmarva is the hardest thing you can do. Because yeah. of the bodies of water, you have to have the right wind, you have to have the amount of cold air just above Delmarva to be pulled down across the peninsula. And if, you know, there's a slight shift in that track, even by 10 miles, it's a completely different forecast. All right, I got to tell you, I put my, my water, I got to tell you, guess what my favorite and, and, and everyone will back me up on this. I talk about it. Guess what my favorite app is? What is it? The WBOC Weather app. I, I am not, I, I am not, you know, just, you know, singing your praises or anything. I use it all the time because of the hourly right. uh, forecast. Yep. However, um, if, if yours isn't working, you guys have been telling all of us we need right. to update our phones. Correct. So the company that we that we partner with to help us with our weather graphics and the whole nine yards has given us a, a warning to say, hey, our apps are going to continue to update, but we're now starting to get to that point where if you're not updating to the latest operating system on your phone, whether it be Apple or Android, it's going to start lacking in the features that they're going to start coming out with in the near future. So in order to have the app completely updated, you also need to have your phone updated to the best operating system you can get to. Plus, every phone. time you log on, you get to see this mug right here. So I see your face a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for being here, and we will be right back.